Today we're testing out the Hisolus Apollo, and this is the first solar generator on the market with features that I've been requesting for years. Um, EcoFlow, Delta, Blue Eddy, and all of the others have not been able to add basic features to make these actually usable for off-grid use. So far, this is the first one that claims to be able to do everything, and I'm actually excited to test it for this reason. So yeah, let's start with the special features first. So first special feature is the high input voltage and you can connect 4,000 watts of solar panels at 450 volts. There is no one else that even compares to that, which means you can now use a single series string of solar panels, which makes the installation much easier. Everybody should have been doing this from the start and they are the first ones to do that. Pretty much all the competitors are limited to about 150 volts. This one can do 450. And we've all been requesting for this feature for years now. It's crazy that this is finally the first one that can do it. Also, you can connect 4,000 watts of solar to each unit. So right here, you can connect 8,000 watts of solar panels to these two units. Next, each unit has its own single phase AC inverter, but if you buy two of them, you can put them into parallel and have a split phase output or a 120 to 40 volt. And if you buy a third one, you can actually have a three phase output, which is the first one that I know of that can do that. Next special feature is this is the first unit on the market to turn the inverter on if solar power is available. All the others, EcoFlow Delta and Blue Eddy and everyone else, I've been telling them for years to do this, no one has been able to deliver. So if this has solar power in the morning, it will turn the inverter back on if it was deeply discharged the night before. This is a basic feature for all off-grid solar power systems, and this is the first power station that actually has that. Next, it has a removable ground neutral bond and has a ground neutral bond relay to create a ground neutral bond if you're using these off-grid. So this is again the first one on the market with this feature. If you're trying to use bypass mode or if you have multiple connected in the parallel to a single AC input source and you have the ground neutral bond in your panel, you can remove it from each unit so you have only one ground neutral bond in your entire system. That might be a little complex to talk about for some of you beginners, but if you're trying to build a more advanced user friendly system, you can actually do it with these units. Next special feature is a power saving mode for the inverter circuit. This is very common with Victron and all-in-one systems, but pretty much no solar generator out there has this. When it's in power saving mode, the idle consumption of the inverter is only 15 watts. That's very useful if you have large loads that are infrequently run, but you need the inverter to idle all day long, but with very low consumption. Without power saving mode, it's a little over 100 watts, but we're going to test that out as well. Now let's talk about the AC inverter's output capability and configurations. So first off, it only has a 3000 watt inverter, single phase 120 volt. This is smaller than the Blue Eddy AC500, which is 5000 watts, and it's smaller than the EcoFlow Delta Pro that's 3600 watts. But this can be configured in so many different ways to run any load you want, it's mind boggling. So first configuration is paralleling the outputs. And this is if you have large 120 volt loads. You could put two, three, upwards of six units into parallel for a total output capacity of 18,000 watts at 120 volts. Next configuration is split phase. And what that means is the output is in series, so you can have 120 and 240 volt. And if you have two units you can have a 6,000 watt output capacity but if you have four you can have 6,000 watts on each leg for a total output capacity of 12,000 watts. Next if you have three phase and you have three units you can do 3,000 watts on each leg or you can have six units in three phase so that you have 6,000 watts on each leg for a total output capacity of 18,000 watts. So the individual output capacity is not as great as the competition, but the scalability is out of this world. You can build any size system you need. And imagine if you had six of these units, Think about how much solar you could connect to this. You could build a seriously powerful system with the Apollo 5K. And this is again the first one to be able to do this. This inverter paralleling capability has never been seen on the market before for these solar generators. Now let's talk about the battery capacity and what cells they're using. They're using UL listed EV grade EVE cells and they actually attach to the data sheet. And each unit has over five kilowatt hours of capacity. And that includes the main unit 
and the expansion batteries. Now the expandability of this system is better than anything else available. A single main unit by itself can connect to nine batteries for a total capacity of 48 kilowatt hours. And that's some serious power. You can almost have 100 kilowatt hours if you max out two of these together. So you could easily power a home with this. And that's really good. There's nothing else on the market that even compares. The other ones are like 20 or 30 kilowatt hours. This is almost 100 with two of these. And the expansion batteries connect right here with this large cable. If I wanted to daisy chain another battery to this system, it would connect right here. And these are waterproof cables. These are very nice. Now on the back of the unit, we have the AC input, the DC solar input, and the low voltage DC input for 12 and 24 volt if you have an alternator. And then down here we have the communication ports and it has communication cables if you want the split phase or the three phase configuration. And then over here we have a reset button for the battery, we have a state of charge indicator, an alarm and run, and this is the same type of display that we have on the server rack batteries. So it probably has the same BMS. And right now we have 2000 watts of solar connected and this system is charging and the fans are very quiet. You can barely hear it right now. Now this is the AC charging cable that plugs in on the top right here. And this is a 30 amp plug. Now this allows for speed charging up to 3000 watts, but if you do not have this plug at your house, which a lot of people don't have, I told Hyselist to include an adapter so you can plug it into a traditional wall outlet. And you can change the charge speed on this unit very easily on the main screen. Now this is the cigarette lighter adapter for low voltage DC. You just plug it in right here. Then you plug this into your vehicle. And the max DC input is 10 amps. So at 12 volts, that's only 120 watts. And at 24 volts, that's 240 watts. So that is gonna take forever to charge this thing. I personally would not use this because it would take like a week to charge. But you have it as an option for some of you guys that you wanna use this in a van or an RV. Next, these are all on wheels. So you can either have a single main unit on this platform or you can have a battery and a main unit. But they do not recommend having two expansion batteries and the main unit on the wheeled system. Or you can put three expansion batteries on a single coaster system. They're very heavy so this is quite useful especially if you have a flat area to move it around. But you don't have to use it, you can remove this and have this as a stationary setup as well. Now that you guys know the basics, let's actually start testing it. We're gonna charge this with AC and solar at the same time. So right now we're charging with 1000 watts of solar from a 2000 watt array in winter. We have a NEMA 1450, so a 50 amp supply. And then we're gonna use this adapter to connect 30 amps of 120 volts to the AC input. Just like that. Now we need to change the settings for the charge speed. First press settings and then press next. We're gonna press 3000 watts, okay, then back. And we're only charging now with 690 and 2500. That's because the battery is almost full. It's at 94%, gosh dang it. Didn't realize that this charged up so much yesterday when I connected it to solar. So let's connect it to the other unit that's not fully charged. And we're gonna change the settings again. Ah. And that's the max, I can only get 2,884 watts. And the solar is charging faster than before though. And now we're at 2,900 watts. Oh, it dropped down again. So yeah, I can't get 3,000 watts, but the best I can get is 2,900. Now we're gonna fully charge this unit until it's completely full at 100%, and then we're gonna do a capacity test at the AC output. Now this battery is fully charged and we have two watt hour counters. And we have some 48 volt battery chargers, so we're gonna take all the energy that's stored in this unit and put it in those batteries behind it, and we're gonna measure Measure how much we can get. And they claim that the inverter efficiency is 94%. So with the capacity of this unit and the expansion battery, we should get 10,106.88 watt hours from these AC outputs. So first we're gonna turn on the inverter then plug in the chargers. There we go. We need to pull 2000 watts to do a 0.2C rate test. And we have zero charge sources connected and we're gonna see how long we can run this load for. So we'll be back in five hours and we'll see what the results are. Three and a half hours later and it's still running the load. So we're doing pretty good. Guys, it is about to die right now. So the fans on the chargers are louder than this unit when it's discharging 
Whether I'm charging or discharging, this thing is ridiculously quiet. I cannot believe it. It should get an award for it because it's the quietest thing we've ever had on the channel. Even the tiny little power stations are louder than this thing. Oh, 1%, we're almost there. So with the assumed inverter efficiency from the manual of 94%, we were supposed to get 10,106.88 watt hours, but we actually pulled 10,110. So we actually exceeded it by four watt hours. And that is very, very small. If this shop was colder, I don't think we would actually hit that. That is almost perfect. But I do keep this shop at 75 to 80 degrees for this reason, so my capacity tests are very accurate. And the screen is still on, so the next test is to see if this will turn itself back on with solar in the morning. Now the inverter restart function with solar power is enabled when you first turn the unit on. There's a small button on the bottom, so you need to enable that for this function to actually work. So it's enabled it's connected to solar so when we come back in the morning this thing should turn itself back on so unfortunately we're running into some serious problems and I need to tell you guys about them this morning I tried to get the inverter to restart itself with solar I had no luck and we found out there was an error in the software and they told me that they were gonna get a firmware update to resolve it because I couldn't get the inverter output to turn itself back on when solar power was available but the unit was charging all day with solar and then I touched it and I felt a little shock and I was like, what? There's no way. And then when I touched both cases, they're not connected electrically, I got a shock. And I actually measured 185 volts between the two cases. And then I started unplugging everything and then using my voltmeter right here to figure out where the potential or the leakage was coming from. And I narrowed it down to the MPPT circuit. There is AC voltage leakage whether the inverter is on or off or whether the AC input is connected or not connected, but when you have solar connected, there is leakage at the case. And that is a big no-no. That is not good ever. You, that can kill someone. That is not good. I had a shock go through my chest and my arms. I haven't been shocked in a long time. I've been doing this every day for a long time. I did not anticipate a product that looks this nice, that has this type of feature set, to actually shock me and have a ground fault somewhere or leakage. Also, I called up another YouTuber that has this exact same model and he's making review videos right now. It's Minuteman Prep, you can check out his channel. Um, he said that he got shocked when it was connected to solar today when he was touching it. He said it was very subtle and then I started you know, probing around. I found 60 volts, I found 185 volts. Um, between the battery and this expansion battery, it was about six to 12 volts, depending on the configuration. Also, I tested if it had to do with the AC input, the 120 volts, and that was negative. Whether I connected to either one, whether it was connected or disconnected, or the AC output was on or off, it did not matter. The potential was only there with AC when the solar panel array was connected to this unit only, not this unit. So this is the problem causing unit here. Let me just show you guys, because this is nuts. So battery to expansion is 7.5 volts AC. Case to case is 63 volts, but this goes up to 185 volts when the solar is connected. And heck, from the main unit to concrete, we've got 26 volts. Look at that. That's crazy, 27 volts. Imagine if I was running 450 volts on this unit and then I touch both cases, I could be dead right now. So this is very scary, very concerning. And this is, you know, the risk of doing what I do. I did not expect it from this company though. This is really unfortunate. And I'm glad I can post this video to share with you guys because when you get these new products online and everybody's excited for them and everybody wants to buy them, it doesn't mean that they're good. Look at how excited I was in the beginning of this video. I was freaking out. This, I was like, this is exactly what we want. And I want it so bad, but it's not ready yet. This is dangerous. This is not good. So hopefully they fix it. I don't know, maybe another company you might watch this video and be like, oh, maybe we should make a system with those features and they'll actually do it. But who knows? Um, hopefully this teaches everybody. Um, these things can be very, very dangerous and it's not fun to deal with this type of problem. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.